Hello everyone. Today in this video we are going to look at a really interesting material thermal property, thermal conductivity. It is such an important material property because it gives us key information on the ability of a material to conduct heat. We can start with a quick experiment. Let's take two rods, one made up of steel and another copper, joined together at one end and stick some matchsticks using wax on both the ends. Now if we apply heat at the joint, which matchstick will fall first? Thermal conductivity can tell us which material will conduct heat faster and melt the wax first. Sticks on the copper side falls first because the thermal conductivity of copper is much higher than steel. So copper conducts heat faster than steel and melts the wax faster. Now we will see how this property works in a solid box. In solids, heat transfer takes place by direct contact known as conduction. Take this blue cuboid. If we apply heat to its one side, it will be transferred to the other end developing a gradual temperature gradient. Let's see how we can determine the thermal conductivity of a material. First let's give name to the parameters involved. dx, dy and dz are the dimensions of the box. th and tc are the temperatures of the hot and cold sides. And q is the heat applied to the hot side. Thermal conductivity is calculated from the Fourier's law of heat conduction given by Joseph Fourier. Fourier's law states that the rate of heat transfer through a material is proportional to the temperature gradient and the area normal to the direction of heat flow, where the proportionality constant K is the thermal conductivity. Now if we rearrange this equation, we get the formula for the thermal conductivity, where A is given by the product of dy and dz and dt is the temperature difference between hot and cold sides. Thermal conductivity has a unit of watt per meter kelvin. Now we will see what drives conduction in solids. Here we see a hot cuboid. If we cut it open, inside we will see a solid skeleton, which is known as lattice structure or the atomic arrangement of a material. This is one of the things which will drive conduction in solids. Next is the migration of free electrons which can also cause conduction in solids. Let's see at the electronic configuration of a metal silver. You can see that its outermost shell has one electron. This is known as delocalized electron. So silver atom can lose this electron to become stable. And these are the free electrons which can then transfer heat inside the metal. Opposite to that, a non-metal such as iodine has 7 electrons in its outermost shell and will not easily lose electrons to become stable. So non-metals do not have free electrons for conduction. Now we will see how conduction takes place in metals. What you see here is a 2D lattice structure of a material. In metals, conduction takes place by lattice vibration and electrons. When heat is supplied to a metal, its lattice structure starts to vibrate about its original position and transfers the heat energy. This is known as lattice vibration which is shown here in blue color. Also since metals have lots of delocalized electrons shown in black color, they also strike to migrate and transfer the heat energy. In pure metals, electron contribution is the most dominant. Now that we know how conduction takes place, let's look at thermal conductivity values of some metals. Now let's move to alloys. Alloys as we know are combination of two metals. 
So what should happen if we produce an alloy by combining two metals of higher thermal conductivity values? Let's take aluminium and copper and we get a resulting alloy bronze which tends to offer a lower thermal conductivity value than the pure metals itself. It's because atoms of different size will vibrate at a different rate which changes the pattern of thermal conductivity. This results in less energy transfer between atoms and therefore there is less thermal conductivity. Now let's move to non-metals. As we have seen earlier, non-metals do not have any free electrons for heat transfer. So conduction in non-metals is generally dominated by lattice vibration. Now let's look at some examples of non-metals. You can see here that diamond has a very high thermal conductivity value exceeding that of silver. This is due to its very highly ordered lattice structure rather than an amorphous material like glass. This also demonstrates the effect of arrangement of lattice structure on the thermal conductivity of a material. Now let's take a situation from your day to day life. A wooden table in a room having a steel glass over it and if it's cold outside say it's at 5 degrees celsius. We can assume that the steel glass and the wooden table are both at room temperature 5 degrees celsius. But if you touch a wooden table and the steel glass, you will feel that steel glass feels more colder than the wooden table. Why is that so? It's because steel glass has a very high thermal conductivity value than the wooden table. So when you touch the steel glass, the heat from your body flows at a very higher rate as compared to when you touch the wooden table. So the steel glass feels quite colder than the wooden table. And that's it. We have reached the end of our video on reviewing of thermal conductivity. If you enjoyed this video kindly like and subscribe and keep watching for more interesting science related videos.